Okay, here we're asked to integrate the sine of 2 theta. Um, now, when we're thinking about what integration technique would work here, one thing that kind of jumps out at me is these layers. I have an outer layer that's a sine and an inner layer that's not just of theta. If they had asked me to integrate just sine theta, the answer would obviously be negative cosine theta plus C and we'd be done. But because this is a 2 theta and we have layers and we, we call that composition, then that hints at the fact that we're going to use U substitution. So when you want to use U substitution, what, what we're doing in U substitution is we're letting part of the integrand uh, be represented as U, and we're going to try to write this integrand in terms of U, which will look simpler instead of theta. Uh, typically, we let the inside of the two composed expressions be the U, so we'll let this be 2 theta. Now, just to prevent us from having sine of u, the sine of 2 theta, sine of u d theta, since those variables don't match, then I also need a du. So du, if this is u, the du would be the derivative of 2 theta, so that's a 2 d theta, d theta. All right, so um, it's time to swap everything out now. Uh, this integral right here would become sine of u, sine of u, but unfortunately, we still have a d theta here. So to change this d theta out with du, what I have to do is I have to make sure that every term that du requires is in this integrand so I can do a clean swap. And currently, I cannot change out just a d theta for du. I actually need a 2 d theta. And unfortunately, I don't have a 2, and, and I can't count this one. I need an extra 2 out here. So if you need an extra constant, this is something we do all the time, you can give yourself a 2 as long as you balance it with a 1 half on the outside because uh, you can move constant multiples outside of the integral symbol and the 2 times a half would cancel each other away. So we'd have a 1 half outside this integral here. That would not go away. But the 2 and the d theta together would become du. That makes it pretty easy to integrate. The integral of sine u would be negative cosine u. So we'd have negative 1 half cosine u plus c. And the last step for the final answer is just to go back and write whatever u was back in terms of x, because the original integral was written in terms of x. So final answer would be negative 1 half cosine 2 theta plus C, and we're done. Um, now, we're, we're finished with this problem. Uh, if you want to go into the next video, you're welcome to do so. But um, I want to close this video here just, just by showing you something a little extra here. This is something you'll start to see more of the uh, more examples you work through. Um, a lot of the easy ones, there's only been one way to do certain integrals. But um, as we move up in difficulty level, you'll start to see that there's lots of ways to do certain integrals like this one. So I just want to give you an alternate way to, to completely different way to integrate this just to illustrate the fact that you can do a lot of these integrals a lot of different ways. Okay, so right off the bat, we still see the original issue, and that's having the 2 theta in there. I would much prefer that it be a theta. So one thing we can do is we can use a trig identity, a trig identity, which we know from, from pre-cal, um, and sine 2 theta is the same as 2 sine theta cosine theta. Right, Those are the same thing. And now, um, I don't know if we would have realized this, but I see that one of these terms is the derivative of the other. So if I let the u be sine theta, for instance, du would be cosine theta. So it's not a very typical u substitution because I don't really see composition, but nevertheless, I see part of the expression being the derivative of the other part of the integrand. So it only seems, only seems natural. So this integral here, we basically have the integral of 2u du. And again, it's a, a great little u substitution. Integrate this, you get u squared plus c, u squared plus c. And so final answer, swap out the u with whatever we had it being, uh, namely sine theta. We get sine squared theta plus c. 
it. Now, if you're looking at this guy and saying, well, well, okay, Devin, that that's great and all, but that doesn't look anything like the last answer you got. Where was it? Right here. These don't look anything alike. Are, are you sure you did that right? Is that is that allowed? Um, they actually are the same, believe it or not, because there's another trig identity that says that the sine squared theta is the same as one minus cosine two theta all over two. So there's another trig identity that says that. Now, if you say, well, Devin, that's still, that's still not the same as this. Um, it, it still looks a little different. Well, let me clean it up just one more time for you. Um, if you break this apart into two fractions, you'd have one half minus cosine two theta over two plus C. Well, then look at the first term and the last term. This is a half, which is a constant, plus C, which is a constant. So a constant plus a constant would just give you a new constant. So we can take that negative one half cosine two theta and then absorb the first term and the last term together to be a new constant. So in actuality, they are the same thing. But the, the point of what I was trying to do here was just to illustrate the fact that if you have an integral, don't think anymore that there's one and only one way to do this. Granted, sometimes there's a better way, but a lot of times there could be three or four different ways to compute these integrals. So don't, don't think you're, you're pigeonholed into only one, you know, one technique or whatnot.